Hello there. The UK manufacturing sector is heading for a very much less successful second half of 2023 than it enjoyed in H1, with Make UK revising its growth forecast for the whole year to just 0.8%, and for 2024 to just 0.1%. Well, that's as close to zero as these things get. That's quite a change from what was a very, very positive start to this year. I'm joined by Fahim Khan, Senior Economist at Make UK. Fahim, what the heck's going on? I mean, one minute we're racing up the global manufacturing top 10 charts. The next, it's all doom and gloom. What is happening? It certainly did catch us by surprise, Nick. Um, At the first half of the year, we had manufacturers across the UK reporting tremendous growth in output and orders, much to their own expectations when they had initially predicted 2023 to be a bad year because of all the inflation, the energy prices and all that stuff we saw towards the end of last year. Um, What we have seen in the third quarter is despite manufacturers predicting that they were going to continue going towards growth, more growth this year, that output levels have collapsed to their lowest since the pandemic and order levels have contracted for the first time since late 2020. What we are probably seeing here is the materialization, maybe the realization of the Bank of England's efforts to raise interest rates very aggressively, which they have done 14 times now back to back since 2021. Um, is actually having an effect on not just the in economy, but businesses' own expectations of what they need to be doing to make sure of their viability. Well, there are also some external factors going on which are complicating things when it comes to long-term planning, aren't there? Yeah, so we are seeing a lot. So actually, the, the decline that we're witnessing in the UK is not exclusive to us. We're seeing actually European economies themselves, which manufacturers trade excessively with. Um, they are still remain our biggest market, are witnessing a slowdown. In fact, much of the decline we experienced this quarter is down to international orders declining, particularly from countries like Germany and France and Italy, where their manufacturers over there are actually seeing a decline as well. We're also seeing um, some magnetism, let's put it that way, from the United States. Uh, The Inflation Reduction Act of Joe Biden uh, and the fact that the EU is beginning to mirror some of the the gigantic subsidies and magnetic attractions that are pulling companies' attention away from the UK. Is that having an impact? Yes, I think, I mean, let's look at the US in particular first. So you're right, they have the US um, Inflation Reduction Act which is investing about maybe over 300 billion US dollars in the new green technologies of the future. Now, manufacturers in the UK and especially not just other, just here, but elsewhere in the world are looking at the things that the countries like the US are doing and thinking, actually, they've got a plan where they see manufacturing as the future industry for their country. And of course, when it comes to investors deciding, you know, where do I put my money? Where is my business going to grow? Is it going to be in the UK or the US? Now, regardless of whether or not the US's plan is is actually going to work. It's the commitment that they are showing that they will have some plan, even if they half our it throughout the next 10 years or so, that they have a plan and we do not. And that is having an impact on investment intentions. The same thing we're seeing from the European Union, whilst their plan pales in comparisons to the size of the wallet that the US has, um, they are still also committing to 10, 15 year plans where they're saying, we're going to have battery manufacturing in the EU, it's going to be a priority, we're going to have manufacturing, it's an industry that we need to maintain. And just that language, that communication has an impact on how businesses in the UK perceive where they think they should be for the next 20 years, because at the end of the day, they want to be where they're going to grow most. When you're talking to government, I know you guys talk to the government a lot, What are you saying to them about this? Because we're not hearing anything like what's going on in America or indeed the EU coming out of Westminster at the moment. So our main recommendation to government right now is that we need an industrial strategy. We need something that is going to sit outside of government termism. So outside sitting, whoever the current leader is of the country, it should not matter. An industrial strategy should be um, a part of the plan of any government that sits um, in the UK. Um, That is quite difficult when it says we cannot necessarily compete with the deep pockets of the US, but we still can compete on some um, easier issues such as just having to say that manufacturing will be 
a priority for the UK. I mean, despite that, manufacturers continue to grow regardless of any plans. We, you may have known we have risen from eighth in the world to seven, um, sorry, from ninth to eighth in the world and the global ranking, which shows that businesses continue to pursue growth regardless of any lack of support from government. But we do need, if we want to continue this, if we ever hope to reach seventh, sixth, fifth, or th even the top three someday, then we need a plan that says manufacturing is here to stay and we're going to continue growing it in the UK. Our ambition is that long term, whilst manufacturing makes up about 10% of the UK economy now, we want it to be about 15% of the UK economy now, which would add about nearly 150 billion to, USG, uh, to our UK GDP. Well, it, it just shows, doesn't it, the resilience of uh, of, of the uh, the people in the manufacturing sector in the UK. If if they just got a little bit of a fair wind behind them, we reckon that uh, uh, they could do even greater things. Certainly, I think the, the the biggest communication that we get from our members is when, especially for new businesses who are doing investing in research and development, they come up with new ideas. They've got their proof of concepts. They've got these new products, all in the technologies that we consider to be the technologies of tomorrow from AI from green technologies but then the next question that they ask is when they're trying to raise funding from investors around the world or in the UK the question the investors are ask first is what's the UK's plan you know is this really the best place do you think we should grow you great you've got this amazing idea but is the UK the best place to do it or should we do it in China or in Germany or in the US because actually they've got better plans so Whilst businesses will always continue and manufacturing, especially in the UK, you know, we account for maybe 40p of every pound that we invest is all in R&D. Um, and being the biggest innovators, probably perhaps in the world, you know, we still need to think about whether or not we're actually continuing to make the things that we innovate in the UK or not, because that's going to change in the future if we don't get behind manufacturers today. Well, that, that may be a, a bit of a black cloud in terms of the news that uh, you've brought to us, uh, Fahim, but I think there's a very strong silver lining in there as well. So uh, uh, very much appreciate you joining us. Fahim Khan, Senior Economist at Make UK, thank you very much indeed for being with us. This is Manufacturing TV. I'm Nick Peters.